กี่โลนะมูมูกี่โลมูกี่โลไม่รู้ฮะจ o ดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุดไปจุด Classics. Let's go. All right. So as you can see, it's super, super busy. This is a bit of an assault on the senses coming to Sukhumvit from Tonbury. Always takes me a little bit of time to adjust. But guys, there is some good food here. We're about to find it. I'm going to take you down to two different soys. Soy 24 and soy 26. We're going to start at 26 for some back street noodles, and then we're going to go to 24 for that back alley. How? So, so first off, you want to head down Soy 26, which at first glance looks like any other busy cut through road. But about 100 meters down on your right hand side is an absolute gem of a pork noodle soup shop. One of the best. So here we are, guys. There's actually two restaurants by the same name, Rung Ruang. I always go on the left hand side one. I'm not sure why. But it does have the chuan chim, so it's all systems go. What do you got? More sir. So look, everyone's just got their own job, right? There's stations everywhere. So you've got the main station inside. This guy with the Thailand number nine on the back, he's just doing big lumps of, of more sap. Kilo. More kilo. 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 Oh, wow. So she does 70 to 80 kilos per day. Yes, Wow. Is it not the same? My mum? Uh, it's uh, just only use the same name, but uh, ah. uh, dang dang. brother and sister, ah. something like that. Ah. Tell me I like what, huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so we've got inside seating, but we've also got some outside seating, which is where I'm going to be sitting. All right, so here's what we've got. We're going to have to get that crispy fish skin for sure. I think that's uh, a... Pakapong, I think. Paramundi, I think. Then we'll get Tom Yum Hang dry, and then we'll get clear soup, and then we'll get spicy and sour dry. All right, guys, so we've got fresh orange juice, which is, is meant to be the one in here. Then I went for dry Tom Yum. So Tom Yum no soup, Tom Yum Hang with Sen, and then I went Nam Sai, so clear soup because of that beautiful broth and I've got everything in that one. Orange juice is absolutely off the charts. Look at this. There's four pieces of orange in there. It's not orange, is it? It's Thai orange, but like a tangerine. All right, so in this I've gone full Monty. So we've got that lovely seasoned mince pork. We've got some, I'm not sure what part of the pig this has come from, but this is just a little bit of sliced. The tap, the liver. Chai ha. Chai di. Chai di. Some more. Sliced, and then at the bottom, I've actually gone with uh, sen, which are glass noodles or cellophane noodles, you might know them as. I've got no sugar, so all I've got in this is peanuts, chili, and lime juice, spring onions, and a little bit of celery. This looks mega. Okay, and this one, this is what we're looking for, that cloudy, milky broth. This is what I come down here for, really. Usually I would always pick Dom Yum over Nam Sai, but this one is so flavorful, so rich. As you can see, it's cloudy from all that fat, collagen, bone, 
Right, so again we've got the more sap, we've got that sliced fish cake, the hunger shoulder, and again, liver, heart, no say in here, which is good for me. And with these, as you know, guys, for my Kui Diao Mu, I always get good soup, Sin Lek. The one thing they pride themselves on in here is the quality of the meat. That minced pork, and you saw how many they were cooking at a time, and I think that's what's flavoring the Nam Sai broth so heavily. A lot of it is from the heavily, heavily seasoned minced pork. It's savory, it's a little bit sweet. There's obviously some sugar in there. Because the noodles are sweet even without them adding sugar. Loads and loads of pepper. Now this is the first time I've ever had dried Tom Yum with glass noodles. And uh, I just saw it in a picture, so I thought, why not? Hmm. I like it, it kind of feels like I'm having a hybrid of a Yum Win Sen. Classic Thai East and salad. And a noodle soup. Great flavour to the meat, it's not the softest. The sliced pork's quite, quite tough. But the minced pork is so melt in your mouth and just fluffy, I can let that go. Liver's gonna be an interesting one for me. Mm. Liver's good, just cooked through, nice and creamy. I love the dressing. I think it is the pork that's a little bit sweet because I can say sugar in this. I don't know if I'd have got sugar on this as well. I probably wouldn't be able to eat it, but as it stands, that's a top, top bowl of noodles. I'll tell you what, I don't drink a lot of sugary drinks, but I would come down here. I'd actually probably travel here just for the orange juice. All right, let's try some of this famous fish skin that actually should be put into the soup. It's, a full, it's just a, a salty fish crisp. I like it. All right, noodle soup. You're gonna be hard pushed to find a better broth straight off the bat than this. It's almost creamy. There's so much like fat, collagen, in the stock, it's almost milky. But we're gonna add a little bit to it. I mean, I love the fact that they've got lime juice on the table as well. Don't see that very often. So you've got lime juice, fish sauce, white pepper, doily song, which are peanuts. Obviously the dried chili and the vinegar. So we just put a bit of chili in this. It's such a lovely flavor. I don't wanna mess with it too much. Just wanna put, you know, I've gotta have a little bit of sourness in there. Got a little bit of lemon. I've just made my own tom yum, haven't I? But all right. Now it's got that deep, rich, porky flavour. Now it's a little bit sour, a little bit sweet. We've got two different types of sour: one from the lime juice, one from the vinegar. I'll tell you what I would probably do. Next time I come down here by myself, I would just get it with minced pork and maybe a little bit of liver. Mm. Absolutely delicious. The sliced pork, I was saying this now, the sliced pork in here is a little bit tough. Kind of reminds me of like Vietnam. When I'm in Vietnam, they like their meat a little bit more tough. Yeah, it's, that's not very tender, but the, the, the rest of it, like the heart, it's weird because... The heart's nice and tender, 
but the shoulder's not. But I'm going to let them off because the prop is so intensely good. No points deducted. So this for me, this is what Bangkok, real Bangkok food is all about. And these kind of old school, third generation restaurants are just too few and far between in the city centre for my liking these days. But they do still exist as I've shown you today. The thing I love about it so much in here is no nonsense. It's all about the food. You basically order, you eat, you get out. There's just an unbelievable amount of customers in here. Everyone's at their own station, as you saw at the start, and everyone's got their own jobs. One lady's out in the front doing takeaways, and everything just runs like absolute clockwork. So I asked the nice lady working here, and she told me that the reason they got the same name is because they're brother and sister, and she can't tell me which one is more delicious. So I would just go with whatever one is empty when you get here. How one can have a Michelin recommendation, the other one can't, and it's the same food is beyond me. That tells you all you need to know about the Michelin Guide. But no ranting on that today. Let's get to our second stop, an unbelievable back alley, Khao Sui. Let's go. Got the Ibis slash Mercure Hotel there and it's basically opposite. So just walk up around 50 meters on your right hand side, you're gonna see BKK Home 24 Boutique Hotel down this alleyway. At the end, Khao Sui. Right, so this place is proper, 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 proper back alley. So in here you've got a Tamsang restaurant, made to order and a little bit of Isam food. Opposite that, the Khao Sui shop. As you can see, proper, proper, Back Ali, I wasn't joking with you guys. But here, and get. Oh, get more time. Get more, okay. Get more. Get more. Hello. Oh, that's my heaven. Oh, how so? Guy. Kanom chi, nam niao. You ma chang nai kap? You chang wat nai na kap? You chang wat na alai na? อะไรจังหวัดอะไรเชียงใหม่ครับแม่สวัสดีเจ้าลําเต้ๆลําคานาดลําเยอะๆเออเอาเข้าซอยไก่หนึ่งครับอันเนี้ยฮะกินนี่
look at that. Beautiful. Look at the oil separation. Oh. Right, so we've got egg noodles blanched. Crispy egg noodles fried. And chicken drumstick. All in a rich aromatic coconut based curry. La Pua. So this is not La as in you'd know from Isan. Doesn't have the manao, doesn't have the kaukua, the toasted rice, and all the herbs. It's the only thing it resembles a lap is that it's fried meat, but this has got all the organs in, krangnai, tap, sai, all that good stuff, minced pork, fried garlic, cloves, and a spice mix when the main ingredient is makwen. Oh, guys, I tell you what, I'm sweating like an absolute pig. I've been in here for 30 odd seconds. It wasn't too bad this morning, it was actually okay. And then within about, yeah, about five minutes of being out, I'm absolutely dripping. All right, I don't really know where to start. I've got a lot of food and as you see, I've already eaten two big bowls of noodles this morning, but I will persevere. Oh, quite spicy straight off the bat. Don't think we'll be putting too much chili in there. As always with Bangkok Kalsuet, it's a touch on the sweet side, but very nicely spiced with those Indian spices. Noodles cooked well, crispy on top, soft underneath. I think we're gonna have to, definitely going with a squeeze of lime or two. We're gonna need that pickled veg because we need to, unless it's really sweet as well, we're gonna have to cut that sweet. Just a touch, just a touch. So not mad sweet. We even put some bean sprouts in. Next up, do you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit of chili in it. Give that a mix up. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Well, now you can see that's the kind of colour we're looking for, guys. Mm. Much, much better. Now it's, it's still got a little bit of sweetness, but now it's a little bit more rounded. You got the spice, the heat coming from that roasted chili oil. Heavy, heavy on the coriander seed, which I do love. Love that pickled veg. It's a solid, it's a solid, solid, solid cow soy offering in the heart of Bangkok City. I'm gonna get a bit of this lab. I know people are gonna say, oh, you've got to eat this with sticky rice, my Thai followers. I understand that, but I couldn't possibly eat any more carbs today. So I'm gonna just imagine what it tastes like with rice. I just mentioned to the lovely owner that um, I go to Chiang Mai. She said, well, how do you know the Northern dialect? I said, oh, I go to Chiang Mai every year to eat Sai Owa. She said, we got Sai Owa, so I got some. Look at that. Nice pieces of chunky fat. Sai Owa. I always say the same thing every time I eat this on camera. For me, just an explosion of Thailand, the flavors yeah, everything you would expect from from Thailand. The lime leaves, the lemongrass, the galangal. It's a little bit of ginger in there. Chili. Mm. Very fatty, very rich. Very, very good version of Say Oa. I don't think they've made these themselves. I would be absolutely amazed if they did. Made ham ing, am I? No, no, <laughs> From Chiang Mai, from Chiang Mai. These are the lum te te, no? Mm. Right, next up, I'll try this la kua. Now, if you haven't had this version, which everyone, even abroad, has had the Isan version of la, I would implore you to try this. It has a completely different flavor. Now, I was joking with her at the start when I said that I would eat that whole bowl of Gatiam Giao, but now after trying a little bit of this, I'd probably give it a go. Look at that. Look at this. Caramelized garlic. It's almost gone, what we would say too far, like when we're taught to cook Western cuisines, you would say like that garlic's burnt, but here that's how they have it, and it is amazing. Sweet, sticky. Mmm. And with the Mac Wen, which is like a cousin of Szechuan peppercorns, it's got the most amazing floral, fruity flavor. And you're getting all those different textures from the different cuts of offal and meat. The fresh herbs, the dried, fried chili. 
Just another top, top, top. Example of Northern Taipei. The lamp, the say oh, on another level. Right, now Nam Niao, which is probably, I probably, I eat this more than Khao Soi, without a doubt. I think everyone in the North does. Not everyone, but mainly, like you could eat this every day because it's like a, it's rich, but it's quite light at the same time. Like it's not, it's not that heavy. Whereas a Khao Soi, if you're eating that every day, is, is or twice a day, is quite a heavy dish. But I'll try this. So just look at the colour of this already. Every single mouthful you're getting some of that crispy garlic, the pork, mince, or a rib. Do I know? You're mad, la? Aloy, la? Aloy, ma. So I just asked her, it's like the do I know, which are these fermented bean cakes, um, if there's a lot of them in here, because that's all I can say. It's so prevalent, the 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 fermented bean taste, sort of like a Dol Ban Tiang, Chinese bean paste, that kind of vibe, is so prevalent and it almost tastes alcoholic. Mm. This is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. I haven't even put my lime juice in yet. Nobody really needs anything, to be honest. I mean, I can always go sour, you know that. And I can always put in a bit of this cabbage, but that is just an absolute savoury explosion. Mm. Look at that. Just for the camera's sake, I'm going to pick that off. Look at that. Go clean that bone is. I've been cooking for hours. For once, guys, I'm speechless. 100% guys, if you're anywhere near this side of Sukhumvit, get yourselves down here. Very, very good. Northern Thai food, excellent. The best I've had in this area, much better than that one in Ekamai that everyone keeps talking about. This one is proper legit, proper hidden down a little back alley. You wouldn't even know it was here, but it's down the same road as some top hotels. So as I said, the Macure, Ibis, uh, what else you got down here? The Marriott, I think is down here. So I'll stick links obviously with both places that we went today. So you can come and check them out for yourselves. But yeah, very, very friendly stuff. Really, really nice. Uh, as you'd expect, they're from the North and everyone up the North is really, really friendly in my experience. All right, guys, that's about it from me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope I gave you a couple of absolute gems for you to visit on your next trip to central Bangkok. Let me know where else you want me to cover in Bangkok. I'm in it now. I'm. I'm I've got my little fear of Sukhumvit out of the way. So anywhere, any soils you want to get me to go to in Sukhumvit or anywhere else in Bangkok, any areas, just let me know in the comment section below and I will get that done. For now, I'm going to get back over to Tombury before I turn it into a pumpkin. So I'm going to bid you farewell and I will see you in the next one.